Hello everyone and welcome back to the space where we say that I can sleep. If you are seeing this via regularly scheduled program, hello. And if you are seeing this via early access, uh, hello. <laughs> Just kidding, hope you guys are enjoying the month of September so far. It is definitely getting better for me, at least weather-wise, because as of right now, the time I'm recording this, it is very cool out. There is a breeze coming in through the window right next to me, and it feels amazing. But what's also amazing is that I get to do another reading with you guys. So, as per usual, if you guys are enjoying these readings and would like for me to continue doing these readings, you guys can show your support. Maybe do a little extra for me, like supporting my Patreon at Officially I Can Win. Or you can do the usual following me on my platforms like YouTube and Spotify at I Can Sleep and TikTok and Instagram at officially.icanwin. Now let us begin our 47th ascension into heaven officials' blessing. Impetuous matches, none admits, amidst conflicted laughter. If Lan Chang had declared something like, the one who killed me was you. It still wouldn't have been as much of a bolt out of the blue. Shilian was practically knocked out by her thunderbolt. Me? Upon the throne, even Jun Wu's hand seemed to have slipped from its usual spot supporting his temple. The heavenly officials were shocked into silence and they immediately turned their heads toward the Emperor. However, Jun Wu's hand had quickly righted itself, and he'd already resumed his usual somber pose with his head on his hand. The officials turned their heads back to Xilian. Was this it? The third banishment to manifest before the eyes of all? Xilian felt his soul shaking, and he forced himself to swallow the habitual I can't get erect, alibi, which almost escaped through his teeth. That was only ever an offhand comment used to easily excuse himself, not appropriate for a deployment in circumstances such as these. Besides, there was already private gossip circulating the upper court about various martial gods and their attitudes towards women. When Feng Xin saw women, he respectfully stayed far away and Lang Qinxu blushed the moment he saw them. Mu Qing refused to even acknowledge ugly women. And while Pei Xu was silent when he saw women, who knew what was actually going through his head? Quan Yi Shen didn't ever seem to have women on his mind, but Pei Ming's was constantly consumed by them. If Xilian tried his usual excuse now, no doubt his name would be added to this list. Miss Lan Chang, please calm yourself, Xilian pleaded earnestly. There is definitely no such possibility. Lan Chang was glaring so hard her eyes were larger than bells. Oh, yes, there is. It's you, the crown prince of Shen Le. Even though this woman had died after Shilian's first ascension and the timing could perhaps match up, wouldn't the man himself know better than anyone whether he'd met her before? Amidst the circulating whispers, Shilian's expression and tone grew solemn. Miss, I may not be a saint, but I still know a faithful heart. If I did not love someone, I would never cross any such lines with them. He said sternly. If I did, I would never allow that person to suffer any speck of grief. Even if I had to beg and collect scraps, or busk and perform on the streets to support my family. You are in the palace of divine might. Do not speak falsehoods. Xi Qingxuan piped up as well. If it really was his highness who committed such a deed, why would he bring this ghost Jiajie to the heavens to confront everyone? And why has Miss Lan Chang only now recognized him? Just think about it. It makes no sense. 
It was easy to see as much, but with such a spectacle to be had, who cared? The crowd maintained a reserved attitude, and an official even blindly hypothesized. Perhaps His Highness lost his memory, so he doesn't remember the things he's done. Honestly, it's more believable that he's bold enough to think she wouldn't recognize him after 800 years. Shillian was speechless and cautioned the crowd. My lords, to prove something is impossible by fabricating something even more inconceivable is a dangerous path to walk. Function looked like he wanted to say something, but also like he couldn't make up his mind. In the end, he remained silent. Junwu cleared his throat. <clears throat> Shinle, how many golden belts did you once have in your possession? Shilian put his hand to his forehead. Too many. At least ten? Mooching answered flatly. Over forty, each with different embroidery and patterns. He only realized the comment was inappropriate after the words left his lips, and he quickly shut up. Instantly, some of those present remembered that Mooching had been Chilean's personal attendant and taken care of his daily needs, which was how he knew such details. Many of the officials couldn't help but think. Counting golden belts alone? Over forty. This highness the crown prince really had once lived an extraordinarily luxurious life. Even Shilian himself felt rather embarrassed when thinking on it. Back then, he changed into a different extravagant ensemble every day, and his belts had changed every time to match whatever outfit he wore. Unlike now, where in an entire year, he only wore three sets of clothing over and over again. Those three sets all looked exactly the same, too. At a cursory glance, people likely thought him so poor that he only had one set of clothing at all. Junwu asked Shilian, And where are they now? Do you remember? Shilian and Fangshin were both stumped. Shilian rubbed his forehead. <clears throat> Uh, not really. We're discussing things from 800 years ago, after all. I've long forgotten where they disappeared to. It wasn't because they had been tossed out. At the time, he and Function often pawned things off whenever their funds grew tight. Too many things had been sold off, and he really couldn't remember whether any belts had been left at the end. Function didn't have the heart to discuss the subject in detail, but said nonetheless. The golden belt might not have been a gift. Perhaps it was picked up somewhere. Junwu didn't seem to actually expect Shilian to remember either. Shinle, I remember that your cultivation method demands a body of purity, lest your spiritual power be significantly damaged. Yes, Shilian confirmed. Wow, so I was right. Qi Jingxuan piped up again. Just looking at his highness, I could tell he must have cultivated that kind of path. If that's the case, never mind knocking anyone up. I bet he's never even held anyone's hand. Shilian was about to say, That's right. But his mind suddenly presented him with the memory of a pale, slender hand as cool as jade. It made a striking contrast against that bright red wedding veil and a thin red thread knotted about its third finger. The affirmation stuck in his throat, no longer able to roll out. Everyone in the hall stared at him intently. With one simple look, it was obvious his silence meant Shi Qingxuan's declaration was untrue. But never holding anyone's hand was too low of a standard. Even if hands had been held, it wasn't such a big deal. Xi Qingxuan immediately added, Even if he's held hands, he must have never kissed anyone before. Again, Shilin wanted to say, That's right. But this time, endless streams of crystalline air bubbles suddenly floated before his eyes. As the translucent bees dispersed through the water, he saw an exceptionally handsome face, eyes closed, a shapely forehead lined 
by a widow's peak, beautiful to behold. This time, not only was he unable to squeeze out a single word, his entire face flushed bright red. Every heavenly official in the hall understood in an instant, and dry coughs sounded all around. Xi Qingxuan was starting to regret saying anything. He knocked his fan over his own head once and secretly passed a message to Xilian through their private communication array. I'm sorry about that, your highness. I only wanted to convince everyone that you're really the ascetic sort, but I hadn't realized you weren't. So you've indulged in such experiences? I really couldn't tell. That last statement shattered Shilian's will. He choked out with difficulty. Don't say any more. That was an accident. Junwu pressed a fist against his lips, clearing his throat loudly. <clears throat> Very good. You have not violated your vows in these intervening years, correct? Shilian let out a breath of relief. That's right. Then this will be easy, Junwu stated. I have a sword here, Yan Shen. It possesses a particular ability. Should the blood of a virgin flow upon it, it shall not be stained but become brighter as it is washed. Take a drop of your blood and let it fall upon the blade, and we shall see the truth. Although it had been common knowledge for years that Junwu had a hobby of collecting rare and strange swords, the heavenly officials still thought to themselves, Why does my lord have all these messed up swords? What's even the use in collecting them? Shilian himself was feeling more and more nonplussed by the situation and only wanted to end it as soon as possible. Ling Wen brought forth that sensual Yanshen sword and immediately slid the blade across Shilian's hand. Countless eyes watched intently, and Shi Qingxuan clapped. Good! Case closed! Drops of blood slid past the blade, leaving not a trace behind, as expected. The proof was as solid as the mountains, and the crowd could only drop the subject. Huh, I see. Hmm, then who could it be? Their tone was lackluster, dripping with disappointment. Ling Wen turned to Lan Chang politely. Miss, please tell us honestly the identity of the heavenly official in question. The fetus spirit in your womb is restless, and your powers aren't strong enough to contain it. Only its blood-bound father can come and discipline it. I... Before he could finish, Lan Chang unexpectedly pointed at Ling Wen and cried, You! That man is you! Ling Wen was speechless. Ling Wen had probably come directly from his temple to attend this sudden meeting and was currently in the form of a man. He was baffled to suddenly be named the child's father. The heavenly official sputtered and Pei Ming chortled. Noble Jie, did you even finish tending to your reports before you went and found a nice girl to knock up? <laughs> this was probably what they called instant karma. Ling Wen shook his head and gracefully declined Shi Wudu's. compassionate gesture of giving his good nephew a congratulatory red money pocket. Ling Wen's expression calmed. I haven't finished, and neither do I have the time. After such a riotous back and forth, and after Lan Cheng hurled accusations at a number of officials, naturally no one believed her anymore. Fang Shen couldn't watch any longer and concluded grumbly. I get it. This ghost woman is this ghost woman was completely crazy from the start and is only here to throw blame. She's come to cause trouble on purpose. Lan Chang cackled, sounding more and more like a crazy hag as she continued. 
And if she did continue, who knew who she'd accuse next? The heavenly officials changed their tune. Yeah, who knows? Maybe that golden belt was stolen. To be fair, I also have more than one golden belt. I actually can't be sure how many I have exactly, and I don't remember if I've stored them properly. Lan Chang wouldn't let anyone off so easily, however. Putting her hands on her lips, she screamed at the crowd. What? Trying to get away? Too late. Not a chance. Is it you? Is it you? Or is it you? At this point, it was obvious she was pointing fingers randomly. Even Ming Yi, who was silent, standing in a corner focusing on chewing whatever his cheeks were stuffed with, was indicted as the father at one point. It was chaos in the Great Hall, and everyone was shirking responsibility left and right. Take her away, take her away! Don't let her spout any more nonsense! Jia you're not my type. Don't you slander me! This is downright outrageous! Junwu waved his hand, and a junior official came to collect Lan Chang. Even as she was dragged out of the Palace of Divine Might, she continued to scream and laugh shrilly. The officials within the hall returned to their assigned positions, their hearts still pounding as their heads throbbed. At first, everyone had thought the matter didn't involve them and they only came for a good show. Now they weren't so sure whether they would be the ones getting a bucket of crap dumped over their heads. They might even wind up landing themselves a new play in the mortal realm, starring alongside a ghostly lady love with gaudy makeup and a ghostly son who had murdered thousands. Sensing the danger, they all slapped their hands in exasperated helplessness. There's no way in investigating this case. I think she's simply wrong in the head. No need to investigate. It'd be a waste of time. Just lock her up. This is surely... This could very well be the ghost realm mucking about on purpose. Xilian disagreed, however. On the way here, Miss Lancheng was quite self-aware. So why did she suddenly grow erratic the moment she entered the Palace of Divine Might? I'm afraid it isn't something that can be brushed off by calling her wrong in the head. Thus... The crowd broke down and divided into two sides to debate in the... <sighs> Thus, the crowd broke down and divided into two sides to debate and argue. In the end, the conclusion was still that never changing... We'll see. We'll see. After the meeting was dismissed, Xilin bid farewell to Xi Jingxuan, who promised he'd descend in a few days to visit and hang out then walked out of the Palace of Divine Might, sighing to himself. <sighs> they say the Palace of Ling Wen is inefficient, but it can't be helped. Every time we gather to discuss anything, there's so much noise. An ambiguity, and in the end, the conclusions are never concrete. How can the Palace of Ling Wen accomplish anything when this is what we give them to work with. Just then, he sensed someone approaching from behind, and he turned to see Fang Shen. Slightly taken aback, he hadn't even greeted Fang Shen before Fang Shen hastily gave him a warning under his breath. Watch out for Mu Qing. Xilin hushed his voice as well. Mu Qing? That ghost woman reacted oddly when he entered the hall. Like she was afraid of him, Feng Shen said. I don't care to pry into other people's personal affairs, but in any case, watch yourself. He hurried off after he, he hurried off after having a say, leaving Xilian standing in place. Xilian waited until Feng Shen was gone before he started walking again. Even though he hadn't shown as much, Xilian had actually paid close attention to every heavenly official's minute behaviors, as well as Lan Chang's reactions. 
Naturally, he hadn't missed Mu Ching. However, he didn't think the father of the Vita Spirit was likely to be Mu Ching. Xilin couldn't imagine him doing such a thing. Mu Ching undeniably focused his whole heart and mind on cultivation, improving his martial arts, expanding his territory, and growing his believer base. Furthermore, he and Xilian practiced the same cultivation method, and Mu Ching would never even consider ruining his cultivation by touching a woman. However, Mu Ching clearly knew Lan Zhang. That was definitely true. But with so few clues, Xilian could only shake his head and descend from the heavenly court. With the Vita spirit subdued, and Lang Ying and Gu Xi settled in the wealthy merchant's abode with food and drink, with the Vita spirit subdued, and Lang Ying and Gu Xi settled in the wealthy merchant's abode with food and drink, there was nothing to worry about. Nevertheless, it wasn't good to be away for too long. If Xilian took his time returning, the wealthy merchant would probably start grousing about his absence. Thus, the moment Xilian descended, he went straight to the town of Puchi. When the wealthy merchant saw him, he immediately clutched his hands and cried out in excitement. Dao Zhang! You're a master! A master! You slept in my concubine's chambers last night, and the doors were all locked! Yet this morning when we opened them, I couldn't believe my eyes. You disappeared into thin air. Strong, too strong. So, did you catch the monster? It is caught. Don't worry. Everything is fine now, Xilian replied. How are the two children I brought with me? It was like the wealthy merchant had received absolution, and he cried joyously. Oh good, they're very good kids. They didn't eat much at all. Dao Zhang, where's your Thousand Lights Temple? I'm going to donate and offer my gratitude. From today onward, I will proudly wear my title as one of your temple's devotees and let none dispute that devotion. Xilin didn't know whether to laugh or cry. But no matter what, he had increased his number of worshippers. And this one was rich too. So he was feeling rather glad. He lectured the wealthy merchant on the topic of virtue, discouraged him from continuing to chase lascivious pleasures, and advised him to be more devoted and loving to his wife and family. Finally, he told him to visit Puchi Shrine on another day, after which Xilin left with Lang Ying and Gu Xi in tow. The trio returned to Puchi Village. Xilin placed that, please donate and help with the renovations, sign in a more conspicuous spot in front of Puchi Shrine, in hopes that when the wealthy merchant came, he would see it straight away. But the moment he pushed open the doors to enter the shrine, he sensed something different about the place. As he entered the shrine, indeed, it was vastly different. The floors had been swept, the altar table and chairs wiped, the dust cleared, and even the trash in the corner had been cleaned out. It was like the river snare girl had paid a visit. Everything was too clean. Even Chirong was gone. With Chirong's disappearance, it was like the entire place had become that much more spacious and bright. Even the air had cleared somewhat. In his arms, Gushi was carrying meat pies he had especially brought from town, and when he peeked in and didn't see anyone, he grew anxious. Uh, Dagaga, where's my dad? Shilian immediately turned. He hadn't even stepped out the door before he sensed the chilling glint of an oncoming assault. He instantly drew Feng Shin to strike back. That chilling glint was struck high into the air, falling to the ground dozens of meters away. He had unsheathed Feng Shen so fast as lightning. He had unsheathed Feng Shen as fast as lightning and sheathed it with equal speed. He let out a puff of breath and was immediately puzzled. That's it? 
No more follow-up moves? He went to inspect said chilling glint properly. After he struck, it had wound up crookedly planted in the earth. The curved silver arch seemed more and more familiar as he closed the distance between them. Shillian brought the two children over, and when he clearly saw the blade, he immediately knelt beside it. Isn't... Isn't this a Ming? He exclaimed. What's wrong? Asking a scimitar what's wrong was an extremely odd sight. A few farmers walking past gave Shilian odd looks and elbowed each other surreptitiously. Hey, look at that man. He's talking to a blade. Yeah, I see it. Don't bother with him. Let's get out of here. But Shilian had to ask because a Ming's entire blade body was shaking violently. Even the silver-lined eye on the hilt. It shook harder by the minute, like it had contracted a deadly disease. Shilian reached out in spite of himself, worried. Did I hurt you just now? 